Okay. Um, so my name is Jordan Lloyd. I am a senior. I graduated in 2019. Graduate well in 2019. And this summer and spring, I was doing research and studying in um, Bahia. It's a state in Brazil, and the city was Salvador. And the community, which is also favela, we call them comunidades, that I was working in for my internship is Calabar, and we speak social projects the name of the organization. Um, so, so I wanted to start a little bit about why I was there. I was primarily there to study Portuguese, and then I came out studying education and inequality and intersectionality. So I acquired all that through my host family, my brother, my sister, uh, my host father, my host mother, and then the city in which I lived. Uh, Salvador is very special because they have a large um, Afro-Brazilian presence. The uh, Salvador, the city itself, is very historically significant because it was the first place where, during the African slave trade, Africans entered the New World. And this area right here is called Pelourinho. In Salvador, it's the historic district, and that is the Bay of All Saints, where the state is named after Bahia, Bahia de Todos Santos. That is what it's named after. So every morning, I get to, I got to wake up, and that was what I got to look at. So it was a pretty great experience. Um, and then my other family at We Speak. Uh, we had this social project set up in a community. And so this community was actually a pilot program within uh, the UPPs, their police pacification units. So they were developed in order to create better relationships between the communities and the police officers who, was work who were working in it. So the police space was put in the center of the favela, in the community, and it was also the community base. So you had um, outreach programs, you had karate being taught, you had musical programs, and then you had also We Speak itself, the organization, being housed in here. And I got to talk a lot of times with the captain, Capitan Elena. Um, she was really, really great, and she helped me out a lot when ambassadors came to the program. We had people from Morehouse coming to visit the program, and it was really interesting. And founded by Vinicius Batista, he actually lives in Calabá, and he was, his, uh, I think he's only a year younger than me, but he founded this organization. And he went to school, he learned English, he got one of the scholarships available to study English in the university, mm -hmm. and he's studying to become an ambassador himself. Um, and the We Speak itself, uh, we teach English, and we also teach North American culture and politics. And so we try to provide a little bit of the culture and politics, because what you see in mainstream media about America is not always accurate, especially coming from me, I'm going to show you um, Freedom Riders, I'm not going to show you Avengers, although they did ask for Black Panther. <laughs> um, so my research was ended up being on education because I work as an assistant teacher for Spanish here, and then I started learning Portuguese, I was studying anthropology with Dr. French, I was studying international development with Dr. White. And so education became something I was interested in because I'm already doing it and learning a language in Portuguese. So I thought maybe I could utilize some of the methods that I use in Spanish and some of the things that are used to teach me Portuguese in teaching other people English. So you have a dichotomy between the public and private institutions in Brazil. You have public institutions, the public universities, they're bigger, they're well funded, and they, these are the premier universities. The private universities are lesser known, but they're also, they're also good public, they're free, open, you take kind of like a nationwide SAT, and then those who are in the highest percentiles are the ones who get accepted in. So you would apply for medicine, you get in the high percentile, you go in for medicine. You apply for each different course. So you can't just apply at large, you have to choose a, specifics, um, a, a specific discipline. So you have to know what you want to study before you get to university, and you have to stick with the whole time. Um, so you have two ways of doing it. If you are Afro-Brazilian, you're ethnic minority, or if you're in the lower class, you have contas and you have bolsas. Contas, it means quotas in Portuguese, and these quotas mean that they have specific seats designated for ethnic minorities, Native American, Afro-Brazilian, or other, and then they have specific contas also set aside for those in low class. And then the bolsas are specifically for private institutions, and one was actually founded by my host father, which made it that much more amazing to study, that is specifically for Afro-Brazilian students to go to private universities. And with, uh, regarding the literature, there is one thing that they all say, is that using the public primary and secondary schools, you are not likely to go to the public university system. If that's all you have, then your chances are almost zero. Because most people going to the public universities are actually coming from private schools. And most people who come from the public schools are going to private universities. And it's really interesting to see how those with 
more wealth or those who come from a certain ethnic group are able to go and get a jump start in life and go to public universities. And with the contest, there's a little bit of controversy because they say that, like affirmative action, people who may be underqualified are able to bypass my seat because they have specific quotas, a specific seat reserved for your ethnic group or for your class. And so that's something that I really wanted to demystify and study, but not under just the public versus private education system, but auxiliary education regarding specifically languages. So then you have the language inequality. In the Northeast, as I mentioned, you have a majority of Afro-Brazilians, and it also happens that in the Northeast, you have a majority of low-class people. And so why do they intersect that way? That's why intersectionality became so very important to me. My best friend. So in the south, you have Sao Paulo. You have where the wealth is in Rio de Janeiro. You have Sao Paulo. And in the north, you have Bahia, which is probably, Sao Paulo is probably the third most famous city if you're in the United States. You really only know Rio and Sao Paulo. But then, if you're black, you know Sao Paulo. So <laughs> then you have the, the northeast. There are less English learning opportunities because people can't afford to take the English classes. You have people in a low socioeconomic class who identifies Afro-Brazilian. And these same people are the ones who lack the skills. So if you are black, you're more likely to be poor because you can't afford the opportunities to learn English because you can't get the careers. So everything stacks up against you. And eventually, you end up seeing that most of the people who live in the communities are people who look like me. And that's why they call English elitizado. It is made for the elite. You can't afford the classes. Your public education doesn't allow you to learn. And then you have a lack of free learning opportunities that are going to be housed in places you can, you can get to. And I, by that, I mean within your community, if you can't afford to go to private school, who says you can afford a car? Who says you can afford to get on the bus to go halfway across the city every day to Brotas, where the other language schools are? So I got the opportunity to study at a private institution as a student, to work alongside teachers as an assistant, and then to be the primary teacher at We Speak. And doing all three of those, I was able to understand exactly what students and teachers are facing in this side of education, the side that most people don't write about. And that's why it was important to place myself in the narrative. All these identities that I have, can you tell which one is the American in these pictures? <laughs> yeah, so. My race was exceptionally important because sometimes it redefined my nationality. If I didn't say anything, if I didn't speak and I didn't walk funny, they didn't think I was American. Um, my class, was I rich enough to go to Brazil? Well, because the University of Richmond is so very generous. Yes, I was. <laughs> and my education, um, I knew Portuguese. I came there to study Portuguese. I had been talking with other professors. So I was able not only to talk to other people, but they understood what I was saying. And we were able to engage in a dialogue and have a cultural exchange. So intersectionality was extremely important in understanding how all these things redefined each other and how I was able to enter the world and be perceived. So much that even an American ambassador didn't know I was American. It was really weird. I walked in and they were like, look, we have an American teaching here. And he came and was like, where? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, your accent is so good. Where did you learn English? I was just like, you know, I just, I'm secretly Brazilian. I've been fooling you the whole time, you know? So that was my experience. And so placing myself in a narrative means that I also have to get to Calabar. I had to walk from my house into Calabar, and it's still an informal sediment. It is more politicized, it has more resources because it's a pilot program for the UPPs. But this is still what it would look like if I was standing up on one of the hills and I wanted to look at Calabar, this is what you would see. I go to Bluebird, which is in Brotas. It's, it's a, a more wealthy district that has a lot more schools. You have the nice little sign, Bluebird, Gigi Almas. You have my students going up the steps. Hi, Jordan. So you have the community on this side, you have Bluebird on this side, and transportation became an issue. I can walk to Calabar, but the bus system wasn't so great to get to Brotas. So not only did you have to pay to take classes at Bluebird, but you also had to pay to get someone to, to take you there, or you had to have a car. So these were other things that were determining factors in, in whether or not you could learn English in Salvador. And then safety. I'm in a community and the community base is also the police base. So I'm teaching in one door, and then the other door, you've got people coming in who are drug dealers. One time, 
I was sitting and having a talk with the police officer and she was telling me, she showed me a picture and like, oh yeah, he's like the main drug dealer in the community. And I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me keep that in my memory. I don't know where to keep away from. But I had a lot of people looking out for me. Being a estrangera that's a foreigner is, is very different when you look like the people that you're amongst. And that's one thing in the literature they don't talk about. They don't place themselves in the system. They're analyzing it from the outside, and sometimes you have to go inside and see exactly how you are affecting, okay. <laughs> how you are affecting it. So in doing so, I got to spend time outside of class with some of the teachers. I got to spend time in class, and I got to listen to the students and interact with them. And I got to build relationships that I still have today. They still hit me on WhatsApp all the time. They're actually waiting for pictures of this presentation. Um, so I wanted to know, I stepped in knowing Portuguese and expecting one thing, and I stepped out with something else. And I wanted to know, what did they step out with? So I asked them, oh no, that's the part I'm missing. Oh no. Okay, so I'll read it to you. I have some people from We Speak who I asked for things for them. What did they want to say to you all? And um, one said, I've learned a little more about English and North American culture and acquire knowledge that I will take for all life. And she said that in English, so I was really proud of her. Oh, wow. um, so I'm really, I'm really proud that they took something with them in the six months that I was there for both study abroad and the internship. And then another one from Leji, she, she's an amazing young woman. Um, a través de la e do curso, sentia coragem para ter novas amizades com, com a estrangeiros. And so that means like through me and both the school that she, she found the courage to make new friendships with foreigners. And she wants to travel the world, so now she's taken the first steps in her education, her English education, so that she can fulfill her dreams. And that's all I ever wanted out of this, and I'm glad that I was successful. So um, yeah, I just want to thank the CCE, the Office of International Education, the CIE program that helped me get abroad. And um, obrigada, we speak, e a Blueberry, and also to my academic advisor, Dr. Jane French, my academic um, advisor, Dr. Dixon Abreu, and Dr. White for coming and visiting me. So thank you all.